just want to uh, explain the ramp up scheme for uh, the, the, the ropes we've been using to say for boot camp and CrossFit and things like that. But this is also just a general warm up scheme for really any kind of ramp up. And there's two main approaches here that uh, I'm going to work with. And that's sets of cross or basically a ramp up uh, scenario. So there are two different scenarios. And I may have a rep scheme where I might say it's we're going to do 10s or, or 10 reps for five sets. I, I tend to write this backwards. I'm going to know what the reps are first. Then sets. A lot of times in the field and industry, you'll see this written backwards actually, but I'm more worried about the rep scheme because the rep is dictating what we're focusing on for that phase. The sets are going to be a tad more arbitrary, but it's also very important. So anyway, I'll be writing the, the reps first. But uh, as we do this, to, to work with that, that given rep scheme, let's say uh, this week right now we're in threes for seven rounds slash sets. So we're doing three reps at a time for seven rounds. So how, that could mean a lot of things. That could mean uh, 25 pounds for all those sets, or you could go 25, 30, 35, and so on. But what I would do is be more specific about what you're going to do with your weights here. So we're going to use rough percentages. Now, this is not set in stone, but this is just a rough guideline. Now, the heavier the weight you lift, you know, roughly about 300 pounds or more, this is going to start being skewed, and you want to start actually changing this up, and you might add or subtract to this uh, for what fits your needs a bit. But any, if you're lifting 300 pounds or less, this is pretty tight and pretty close for these two scenarios. So sets of cross means you're basically going to be working up to a specific weight and doing multiple sets there. And there's even some very variations within the sets of cross approach. But basically, you'd be starting with roughly 50% or about the bar first on your first set for, let's say, three reps there. Sometimes you can do more reps there if you want to warm up. Then the next set would be about 75% of your goal weight uh, for three reps and 90% of your goal weight for three reps. Then if that goes well, this is sort of a grouper set that makes sure things are good. And then you take a smaller jump. From this, these are 25% jumps here, then a 15% jump, then this would be a smaller jump so you don't just throw a bunch of weight on the bar and get crushed with it, and you'd be doing uh, your 100% for that goal weight. Now, that doesn't have to be a three rep max, it could be a daily uh, 100% for that day, but regardless, it's 100% of that rep, that weight, for that rep scheme for that day. So that would mean sets across, you're doing that same weight for sets four, five, six, and seven, and even if it's a bad day, let's say you want to stay at 90%, there could be five sets across there with that sort of weight. Now, we could do more sets from there, sets 8, 9, and 10, depending on how advanced you are, how, many, how much time we have for sets. But this is sort of just a generic template to work up the sets across. So let's say you do 100 pounds uh, for your three rep weight. That would be basically the bar slash 50 pounds, 75 pounds, 90 pounds, 90 to 100, and so on. So, uh, so find out what your goal weight is. You want to have some kind of idea what that is as you go through this and plug in those numbers. Uh, but then again, uh, it's good to take notes. Uh, we're going to get some note-taking guidelines in a bit. Uh, and so you'll have a better idea of uh, how to pick the best weights for each and every workout. Now, sets across is a great approach for advanced lifters who need more weight, more tonnage, and, and load at high, heavier loads. You can't just work up to one heavy set and get progress from that. This is from someone who's really dialed in and taken out the slack and they need a lot more tonnage or uh, heavier reps and sets to actually still get progress. So they're going to be doing more weight and more tonnage with heavier loads here. So they have an idea of what their capacity is and their capabilities are. They're going to be spending more time there basically and getting there faster than they would in say a ramp up approach over here. But it's also good for people who are scared and just not sure what to do. They're not as comfortable with the exercise. They're not really comfortable ramping up to heavier loads here. So uh, this is a nice way to maybe just practice the movement. So even though we're going for threes or a relative three RM for that workout, it doesn't have to be uh, your best for three. It can just be the heaviest that you're comfortable with that you can keep the, the most perfect position and technique and not risk injury. And as time goes on, you'll start to the, the tip those weights up a little bit higher than you're comfortable with. So this is ironically good for advanced and beginners, actually. So uh, there's two sides of the continuum, but I mostly use it for the advanced people for the most part. Other ways to use this, though, when you are super advanced, and let's say you work up to your 100% rep scheme for that day, uh, let's say that just took everything out of you and you're exhausted and your form got a little shaky and iffy there, you might even drop down back to uh, 90 to 95% there, take some weight off the bar, and do the heaviest possible practice you can relative to that rep maximum. So it doesn't have to be the same weight necessarily, but it is termed sets across. So the idea being you're working up to that 90 to 100% load and working in that rep bracket or that intensity bracket for several sets there. So that's one way to do it. The other way would be a ramp up, basically, and we're just ramping up to establish and find what that, that 3RM is, what that 10RM might be, or that 5RM might be, or 3RM. And RM just means rep maximum, so uh, it could be, if I say 7RM, that means what is your 7RM or your 7 rep maximum, the most amount of weight you can do with perfect form for 7 reps, basically. Now, th these are also kind of arbitrary uh, percentages that you can play with and fudge just a little bit. Uh, you can kind of round up or down. Uh, I'd be conservative on rounding down uh, 
most part, but it's basically the bar of 125 percent. So you're starting with a really light. Uh, you know, if you've never done the exercise and you're trying to just practice the positions in the form, build confidence. You see, there's smaller jumps here that are spread throughout these seven sets. So it's uh, the bar size 25 percent. Uh, 50 percent would be on that second set. So that would just be getting comfortable. Some people are just locking with the bar. They don't know how to do the exercise. But you're still trying to set up the bench or the squat rack or the, or the, the deadlift. That's, that's totally fine. You just start with the bar. I start with the bar every single workout in my life. Now, 50% uh, and a small jump to 15%. You're doing small 10% jumps all the way up. And once you start getting iffy and shaky, perhaps towards you, you may not be at your maximum yet, but you start might be starting to doubt yourself and things like that. So the jumps fall to about 5 to 10% here at the end. So 85 could be 90 to 95 or could be... Uh, still just a 5% jump to 95 or all the way up to 100. So you got some wiggle room within that, and the goal here is to find what your rep maximum is for that, that weight. So as you're new, this is uh, for people who I have no idea what I'm doing type of people. So it's great for figuring things out and getting comfortable with the exercise and establishing what that rep maximum is. So perhaps the first workout or two or, or several until you get comfortable is this approach. And then as you advance, it'll be more of a sets across approach to getting more work these kind of weights that you've established. So you're getting uh, heavy practice. Strength is a skill. So you're basically getting the heaviest practice possible, the heaviest loads possible with perfect positions and form. And that's what's going to lead to more long-term strength. The more beginner you are, uh, and the less it takes actually to get results in progress. So you'll notice a lot more uh, strength gains early on. And you can actually get more uh, progress as a beginner in this world just working up to one heavy set. But that's not going to last forever. You need to start doing more sophisticated rep schemes like this. And this is more the intermediate to advanced rep schemes. You have, there's many, many, many more, more ways to skin the cat there. So uh, this is what we'll use a lot for our 10s, 5s, 3 sorts of approaches. Uh, so you're going to set some cross and ramp up there. So uh, next we're going to look at some quick and dirty note-taking schemes to get more detail within your workout card and how to know whether it's good form, bad form, shaky form, was there assistance given, was it an A-plus rep, uh, things of that nature. So thank you. Good luck.